man. We have got some work to do. We're back. We're back. Yay. <laughs> We are so grateful. We just had the most beautiful break from all of this Nigel craziness. Yeah. We just spent five nights in Vanuatu for a job. It was a big pinch me moment. A yeah, huge, it was really, really fun. Yeah, like just an incredible experience. But now we're back and there's no time to spare. We only have like a week and then we're going over to the States to see Kendall's family finally. So we're going to try and smash out the painting before we get to that trip so we don't have too much to do when we get back so <laughs> got a couple of really good weather days it's gonna be hot but not wet so that's a positive so time to start prepping Nigel for the rest of the paint hopefully we can get it done in time Taking that off. Wow. <laughs> well, that's a big effort. But we're ready, I think. Really annoyed, we couldn't get the roof up 10 off. It's way too heavy and awkward in this position. So annoyingly, we're not gonna be able to do the roof just yet. Um, so we're gonna have to, we're doing all the yellow and then once the engine and gearbox and everything's back in Nigel and is up and running, we're going to have to go to a place that we can get a forklift to lift it off, come back, prep and paint the roof before putting the rooftop tent back on it, hopefully in a few day turnaround. But we've got plenty more things to do before we can do that. But for now, it's all Bahama gold. It's been sanded, prepped, cleaned, cleaned, cleaned and more cleaned. Everything's nice and soft and scuffed. Gonna be doing two to three coats of primer, two to three coats of Bahama Gold, and hopefully it goes on all right. It wasn't supposed to be any wind today, but it's sort of coming in little gusts, which is really frustrating, but I'm hoping it doesn't pick up today. I've tried to boot this off pretty well, so I don't know. This is the dodgiest of dodgy home boots, but hopefully it turns out all right. Nervous? Very nervous. I don't even know what to say. Actually just super worried about gusts of wind. So many ants and random things on there. Pretty damn cool. I'm stoked. I'm so, so happy. I'm still using the same paint I used on all the other front end stuff, but one thing I would recommend if anyone's gonna do it is use one of these things that clips on the top and then it's more like a spray gun. If anyone's painted large areas like this, doing that is super annoying. Number one on like your fingers and your forearms. But secondly, I didn't realize how much this would help is it like allowed me to be like a little bit further back to be able to get the fan way better? I don't know. For some, it just clicked way better with this and it was just far more comfortable because this is like the most coverage I've had to do in like single goes, which has made it pretty difficult and would be, I imagine, pushing it with just an aerosol can in your finger. I got this at Bunnings, but I reckon you could probably get better quality ones online somewhere. It was just a last minute thought. It's a little flimsy, but I would definitely recommend getting a good one. I'm pretty chuffed. I'm very happy. Still like there's like that slight texture in it, but I honestly don't know what the limit of how good a finish you can get considering I was outside in a super dodgy paint booth with aerosol cans. The good thing is though, I've done a really nice thick coat. So the same as the front end stuff, I'm going to put a bit of time into cutting and polishing. So that's just using like a super duper duper fine sandpaper going over every inch of it, then a cutting compound and polish just to get rid of any slight impurities or textures. But as a whole, I'm stoked. Like it's super duper even. There's no zebra stripes. There's no like crossover or anything funny. The color's 
perfect. Once I get that gloss coming, once at the very, very end, that's probably the last thing I'll ever do on Nigel before we hit the road, that is. But I can breathe. I'm so stoked. The paint's the same as I used on the first one, which is from the guys at BCS that I ordered online. Mixed up a full two pack finish gloss in the color that I need. So, this is the correct Bahama Gold color that's supposed to be on the Land Rovers. I wanted it to be right, not just a yellow of any kind. The limit to these is actually quite impressive. Obviously, I don't think you can get the ultimate finish that you would want. And I think normally this would be to touch up sections as opposed to an entire car. But given our circumstances, I thought it was worth a crack and I'm very impressed. Can to can, it slightly varies. Like every now and then you'll get one with like maybe a slightly different fan in the nozzle. Um, the pressure for like the first half of the can is really, really good. But obviously as you get to like the bottom half or bottom third, it's not as punchy and powerful, which again, it's like different parts of the can, you're going to get a slightly different finish and like once you get in a rhythm with a new can, all of a sudden you might have to go a little bit slower or overlap a little bit more for the second half. Fair few considerations like that, but as a whole, I'm blown away. It's actually pretty wild that I just use cans for this, but there definitely is a limit from where I'm finishing Nigelite to then an actual showroom finish. Ideally, we would have done it in a controlled paint booth, which would have, I think, made life a whole lot easier, but still beyond pleased with how this has all turned out. Now with that massive one done, that's been such a massive thing for me to think about and be planning for. I'm so relieved that it's done. There are still a fair few like tiny little bits of trim, bits and bobs here and there from in the cab, um, just under the door, things like that, that I do still need to paint, prep and paint for, which I hopefully will do in the next couple of days. Fair bit more tinkering, still waiting on that socket thing that I need for the gearbox to put it back together, but we're actually getting pretty close to the point that once I do put the gearbox together, I'll probably be whacking it in and then starting to think about putting the engine in as well, which is wild to think about. It's just, we're actually getting there. <laughs> we're putting stuff back together again. But a bit more painting to go for me and I'm feeling really good about how this is all turned out. <laughs> Finally got my hands on the tool. The people I ordered through took like a month and then I kept following them up and finally they said they didn't have it in stock. <laughs> so I wasted a bunch of time, but thankfully, It was at this moment that I realized that this tool was in fact the wrong size. Well, <laughs> it turns out it's the wrong size. I was just about to say, <laughs> that a really nice member of one of the Facebook groups I'm a part of that was um, generous enough to send me this to be able to use, but it's not the right size. So I must have described the part wrong because it's way bigger than that is. Oh man. I guess I'm gonna have to do what a lot of people said to do, which was do it the best I can with punching a hammer and try and get it nice and tight on there. And I don't know, with a lock tab, it's not gonna go looser, but man, that's frustrating. I've been waiting like, <laughs> I wanted to have this done before I went to America and I've had to wait this whole time and now it's not even gonna work. Oh uh, well, what are you gonna do?
we're finally putting stuff back in. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm so nervous. We don't know the works yet. I've checked everything that I can check without it being physically in and with a motor and stuff, but checked everything twice. I think it's all good. Starting with the gearbox. Hopefully it doesn't give us too much grief. We'll just have to wait and see. Today's the day though, it's so exciting. It's like all of Glenn's hard work. Hopefully it's gonna pay Start getting some wins under our belt because it's been a lot, a lot of work and it's after a while it starts to get really difficult to just keep fronting up when you still don't feel like you're actually making progress. Even though we have been, it's still like you're not physically seeing it, which has made it a lot more difficult to just keep going. But I think now that we're starting to put stuff back on, it feels like we're getting some wins. Yeah, nerves are high. Yeah, but just like. With the gearbox in, it was time for the engine next. It's in. Man, that was a lot of wiggling and driven about. The, being on a slope makes it so difficult. It's hard enough as it is, particularly having never done it, but it's in. Lines up with the mounts. Everything's nipped up, locked tight, solid. I can now start whacking everything back on the block. There was already a spider web here. It's literally like, I just need to cover everything I possibly can. But, man, this is wild to see. After all of Glenn's hard work, it's so exciting to see it finally start to look like a car again. We'll see you on the next one.